Finland is one of the most northern countries of Europe, borders with Sweden, Norway, and Russia. Helsinki seems fairly small, but there's like 1.2 million people live here. It's only 5.5 million people live in whole Finland. But the winters in Finland are always pretty harsh. I mean, the sun rises, or it usually doesn't even rise really, because it's always like kind of gray and might be snowy or even rainy, whatever it is, like super windy. But the sun is supposed to rise around 10 o'clock a.m. and then it sets again at 4 p.m. So the sun's out only for six hours. I think that's one of the reasons why like Finnish people are really good at winter sports because the winters are really harsh and the only way to pass by those winters is kind of like come up with some activities to do. What I always loved about snowboarding was like there was no rules because I used to play ice hockey, I used to play soccer and the coach would just like tell me like an arrow, you're going to be a defenseman, you know, or you're going to be a goalkeeper. And I was hate to be put in the box, you know, like someone's going to be like, okay, this is your position, you're going to be playing this position. And there was so much freedom and creativity in snowboarding and no one was there telling you how you're supposed to ride. If I never discovered snowboarding, I don't think I would be a, a professional ice hockey player or soccer player, you know. I think this was just this hidden talent that I had and I found it sort of by accident. And I fell in love in the first day and I just rode down once, I was like, this is my thing, you know, this is what I want to be doing, like 24-7 pretty much every day I get a chance to do it. I mean, first of all, I wanted to be like a great overall rider that could like really master all aspects of snowboarding. I felt like always like the guys that I respected the most were the guys that could actually ride everything. And I wanted to be like that as well. And I was putting a lot of work into like thinking about the next moves and next tricks and next styles and what could I do to not be better maybe, but to be separate from the mass that people could actually recognize me and be like, okay, that was Arrow's trick or that was Arrow's style to do something. I think for me it was always really important I was able to like visualize stuff. If I could see myself doing something in my head, I most likely would be able to do it, you know? I've had situations when I've done great in a contest, but I'm still not happy, you know? And there's moments when I'm like, I'm happy even I didn't do well. But I have these like expectations on how I should be able to perform and how I'm supposed to be able to do this trick to make it look the way I wanted to make it look. So I was never that dude would be crying over not making the podium. I would be crying more about like not landing my trick or not doing it the way that I wanted to or just I felt like I was always doing it for the right reasons, not because I wanted to win. But I, I think that also comes from uh, from filming video parts, because I filmed 13 video parts, so like 13 years in a row. In the video parts, you're only fighting against yourself. You know, you are the one to decide if, if you made that trick good enough. You know, so I always transform that same idea into contest as well. If I wasn't happy on like how that trick looked in the air, like I didn't care if I pulled him or didn't, you know, as soon as it looked good, I was happy. If you only snowboard and don't do anything else in your free time, and when snowboarding is over, like, you don't know what you're good at. And I'm trying to figure out right now, it's like, what other passions do I have? Because I don't think I'm ever gonna find anything else that will have that same passion. So I wanna be able to do something that I enjoy on my own terms, you know, because that, my whole life's been just about going somewhere and having fun. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna be snowboarding forever, you know?